Hey guys, how's it going? So we're gonna be doing three different things today. We're gonna be talking about clematis pruning. I'm gonna do a little bit of flower bed cleanup and then just a little bit of planting. Here's where we're working today. We've got three clematis on the trellises there. I wanna clean up the flower bed right beneath them because I know I'm gonna make a huge mess when I take those down. And then I've also got some hellebores to do a little cleanup on. You can see they're all budded up. Some of the blooms are starting to open. And then I've got a flat of beautiful harmony white stock. My mom surprises me with a flat every spring. It's become kind of a tradition. Um, so I want to plant those kind of right around the hellebores because they smell like cloves and I think it'd be really nice to have that scent and that color right in here. So pruning clematis can seem like an intimidating thing to do and I'm hoping that this video is helpful to kind of um, work through some of the details. You treat them almost like hydrangeas because they're grouped very similarly in that there are some clematis that bloom on old wood alone, some clematis that bloom on new wood, and then some that bloom on both old and new wood. So they're grouped in three different groups and usually you'll find that group number on the tag. So you'll see like this, this uh, clematis is a group one or this is a group two or a group three. Group one clematis are those types that bloom on old wood and they bloom early in the season. Um, so they're technically the easiest type to grow because they're the least maintenance. You don't have to worry about doing anything to them unless you wanna remove any dead wood, um, which you can do at any point. If you do need to size control or shape up a group one clematis, you would do that immediately after they're done blooming in the spring. Your group two clematis are the type that bloom on both old wood and new wood. So you'll typically see blooms early in the season and then they'll lull for a minute and then they'll bloom later on in the season as well. Uh, so this type of clematis is also a fairly easy one to do uh, maintain because you don't really have to do a ton of pruning either. Uh, you can go in in the spring, cut out any dead wood, and then you can do a light shear after they're done blooming the first time and then wait for their uh, next set of blooms. Uh, they're fairly easy that way. And then group Group three clematis are the type that bloom on new wood, which means they typically bloom a little bit later in the season. Um, usually you see them coming out like mid to late summer and then through early fall. Um, and they're the type you wanna cut back fairly hard every single year. Otherwise, they'll continue to grow and because all the new wood's typically at the top of the plant, they'll just kind of bloom at the top instead of having nice blooms down below. And like on these trellis that I've got right here, I wanna see blooms from you know as low as possible to the top. So I wanna make sure to encourage that as much as possible. I actually think group three clematis are really easy too because while group one is nice, you can plant it and kind of leave it and let it do its own thing. Group three, there's some security and knowing you can cut it back and you'll still get blooms that year. It's kind of like hydrangeas, you know, those ones that form their buds on last year's growth. You kind of have to like baby them along. If you have deer, you have to make sure they're protected from deer eating on them. Um, you need to be very mindful of when you prune them and it's kind of nice to be free of those things and just know I can go in and hack these things back. They're gonna produce new wood and new blooms. So if you don't know what kind of clematis you have, say you've just moved into a new house, you've got a brand new garden and uh, they've got clematis in there and you don't have any idea, there's hundreds of varieties of them. Just take note of when they're blooming. If they're blooming very early in the season, it's like Likely it's an old wood type. If you see them blooming twice through the season, um, they're probably a group two, and if they're blooming late in the season, then group three. Also take a, a note of what the wood looks like. So when the buds for the bloom start to form, is it on old, like uh, older looking wood that's more brown and hard, or is it on new shoots that look green? So you can tell if it's blooming on old wood versus new wood that way. And then once you have those notes, you can kind of start figuring out like, ooh, I think this might be one that's a group two, or a group three or so forth and then you'll know kind of what to do in terms of maintenance going forward. So again, the clematis I'm working with today are called pink mink. They bloom on new wood. So I'm gonna be cutting them back to about 18 inches above the ground. I'll try to cut them right above a good strong set of buds. I do believe they have started to bud out. Either way, I'm gonna give them a good cleanup today. Um, and when you're siding a clematis, the kind of old saying goes, they like to have their feet in the shade and their face in the sun. And that is true. They do like to have their roots moist and cooled, but they like to have their leaves and the flowers facing the sunshine. So they do really well in a spot where you can plant like perennials or something down below the vine to kind of shade the roots, but somewhere where they can receive a little sun. And this is an interesting area because it does receive a little sun, but not a lot. So so in the summertime, the sun is more straight up in the sky and it does come straight through here and it uh, shines on these for a little while, but not a ton. And then they're kind of in shade for the rest of the day and they still grow 
like crazy. They have done beautifully here. So I've been really enjoying this variety. So let's get in here, get these cut back, get all the vines cleaned off the trellis there, and then we can start clean up. My goodness the wind is just blowing today that took about five minutes not hard at all I love clematis because they don't cling to stuff um, they're just like they didn't need a lot of help or encouragement to climb up the trellis but they don't ruin surfaces and things like that so this is what they look like in the end you can see right here if you look at the tips that I cut I don't know if you can see that but there's nice green coloring there so they're all still very healthy, even though they look dead. <laughs> they're not. So now I kind of want to clean the leaves out of this Japanese maple um, because Japanese maples typically hang on to their leaves throughout the winter time and then they uh, push off in the spring and there's lots of nice buds on this tree right now. So I'll clean all of the leaves off. We're going to kind of rake out this bed right here and then I'm going to trim the leaves off of the hellebores, the ones that look bad, so that we can plant in here. And then I think we'll bring in some mulch and make it look nice and fresh. I love working in small flower beds like this because it's so fast and easy. And I don't know, it's satisfying without taking all day. So before I actually finish with this cleanup here on the hellebores, I wanted to stop um, and kind of show you what I'm doing a little closer up. These are pink frost hellebores. I've got some pictures from when they are more fully in bloom and they are just absolutely stunning. Uh, but after the course of a winter, their leaves from last year, which they're technically an evergreen perennial, but I would say that they're like a semi evergreen and that like you do need to cut the tired leaves off in the spring and you can see what I'm talking about like we don't want to keep leaves that look like this right here they're usually kind of flopped on the ground so this time of year when they're getting ready to put on their blooms is a great time to come out and clean up last year's leaves and they will quickly push new ones so this is the base of the plant right here kind of where the new blooms are coming out so you can just kind of root around in here around the base of the plant and typically you can get a handful of last year's leaves and just cut them off. It's okay if you leave a little bit of stems. That's not gonna hurt a thing, but it just really cleans the plant up and makes it look nice. So let's see, there's a few left on this other one over here. Let's find another handful. Be very careful when you're doing this because sometimes the blooms will kind of come out more uh, to the sides as well. And on some hellebores, the blooms actually happen on last year's stems. So just be mindful of what type of hellebore you're cutting back so you don't accidentally cut the blooms off. So that's what the hellebore looks like when you cut all the leaves out from the base. There's a pile of spent looking leaves, but it will start to push new ones really, really fast. And I do have an example of a hellebore that blooms on last year's stems. So let me show that to you. So right over here, you can see I've got a whole bunch of hellebores. There's also a bunch of spring bulbs starting to push through and I've got a hedge of hydrangeas that come through here. And there's some really beautiful, beautiful hellebores. And you can see like this one's a little bit older. I've come in and cut away all the old leaves and you can see all the new ones that it's already starting to form. 
They're just some really, really pretty ones in here. But this one right here is an example of one that puts its buds on last year's uh, stalks. So if we follow this down to the center, you can see last, the stem coming up. It's got leaves up here on the top that do look a little bit tired, but I just kind of leave them alone. I'll cut away the worst of them. Um, but this one, you just have to be a little bit more mindful of where you're cutting because the leaves are all attached up top along the same stalk that the blooms are. There aren't like individual leaves coming out from the base like on other varieties. Show you a few of these. This one's called Wedding Party Maid of Honor. This one is called Rose Quartz. This one is Sunshine Ruffles, Rio Carnival, and Cheddar. Wedding Party Confetti Cake. This beauty was here when we moved in. Really darkly colored, beautiful blooms. So this one is part of the gold collection. You can see this one has blooms that kind of face upward a little bit more. Madame, I uh, can't remember the whole name on this one, but nice big blooms. And this one is Spanish Flare. Anyway, that's just a few in this bed. I think I've got 37 varieties, like different varieties in this bed right here, some of which are really young. Um, but some of these are starting to seed themselves around, which is awesome because I would eventually like this whole bed to be completely full of different types of hellebores. Like, wouldn't that be beautiful if this whole thing was just filled up? Of course, like I did space them out because like that one is quite large and this one gets massive. It fills this whole area once it puts on leaves. And I wanted to make sure all of these varieties that I've planted in here throughout the last five years, four years, five years, um, had ample room to mature. So those will fill in as well. And then I've got the um, hydrangeas, what are they? Gah, ruby, invincible ruby. Anyway, it's a real pretty bed, I think. Okay, so now I'm gonna go grab a rake and a blower. I forgot those two important tools. I'm gonna use the rake to gather the bulk of the debris, the blower to get into the little tiny cracks under the rocks. And then I'm also gonna grab a few bags of lanitzy compost because I wanna put a bag in around the Japanese maple and the hostas and things in that big pot. And I've never really amended these beds very heavily. So I thought it would be nice just to like mulch up around the bottom of the clematis with that and then around the hellebores. Um, and then we'll get the stock planted. Jeez, I need a new rake. stock looks so sweet planted in there just brought some nice color and I just took the auger and just haphazardly kind of dug 18 holes that's how many I have there so they're just planted kind of willy-nilly in there but look really good with the pink and those hellebores it'll be surprising how fast they fill in once they start blooming um, and they start spreading out a little bit I used four bags of land and sea compost as a uh, mulch here I don't do that as a rule I mean that's kind of intense in terms of mulching but because I haven't worked the soil in a long time with something good I thought it would be a nice top layer um, so I did put plantone down before I put the mulch down all along the uh, clematis there there is sweet woodruff and hostas and some Jacob's ladder and ferns in here believe it or not there's also a hosta that comes up right in here um, and I did toss some plantone in the pot with the Japanese maple as well so this area is just kind of buttoned up and, and done, except for I need to bring the hose out just to kind of clean up the concrete and the stones a little bit where the uh, land and sea kind of spilled out. And I don't want to use the blower too strong right when I put a fresh uh, layer of mulch down because it blows all the junk back up on the mulch. And I like the dark, the dark rich look of this mulch right now. It's so nice. And Benjamin was out here raking up some rocks. Let's find him. Hey, Benjamin. Where you at, buddy? 
Oh, you're blending in with the gator. What are you doing? You're fixing it. What was going on? What you fixing, buddy? You fixing the gator? Well, that is it for today's project. I hope hearing the explanation about the different clematis types was helpful um, because now is the time to prune uh, type three clematis for sure. I've got a few more to uh, trim back in my own garden and then there are some that I'm gonna leave alone. Hey, Benjamin. I don't know that daddy wants rocks on top of the truck. Let's keep them in the driveway, okay? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.